Good afternoon to you, Hasina. Over to you. Good afternoon in Zinga. We are here in Shoshengube this afternoon in the north of Pretoria where the two accused of the mass murder that took place on New Year's Eve in uh, Jacqueline, which is one of the areas here, uh, made a brief first appearance. We saw some delays this morning as the docket only arrived at uh, past nine o'clock, leading to some delays and then finally appearing uh, the community members as well as families of uh, the four that had passed on, um, you know, four of them, three of them being friends and one being a teenager, a 14-year-old, uh, passed on here in quite a tragic incident. The motive yet of the killing is still unknown. Uh, what we do understand is that uh, the three... Um men were standing outside a home and when uh, the young teenager saw uh, her uncle outside she went out to uh, speak with him and that's when two cars arrived and believed that their mass shooting and heavily armed suspects uh, you know uh, then uh, you know came out of that vehicle the two accused did appear today their names are Sipo Komo who is accused number one and accused number two is uh, Tepo uh, Mosemwani he is uh, facing four charges uh, of or they're both facing four charges of murder and one of attempt murder. I want to bring in the community members who've been here. They've been a uh, part of this process from this morning. Uh, one of them is uh, the uh, family of one of those who had passed on uh, in Paul, who's one of the constables. Can you tell us firstly, ma'am, condolences so much on uh, your um, loss. How is the family holding up at this time? And, and how are they just grappling with what took place? Uh, thank you very much. In fact, the family, we are broken. It's uh, really sad. It's not something that we can just uh, take it light because uh, the loss of life, it's really a tragedy, especially in the day that it happened. Remember, it happened at the midnight where we have to cross over the, to the New Year. And then we were celebrating. Everyone was happy to look towards the New Year. And then this happened. So we are really broken. Can you tell me, uh, when was the last time you had seen uh, Constable Limpo? In fact, two weeks ago. He's someone that, you know, he's a person of people, you know, Kemo Tuabatu, always is the, he's really a lovely person. I understand he is. And uh, can you tell me, here today in court, you came into the courtroom, saw that two accused. How are you feeling, you know, seeing those two accused? Were they people you knew, firstly? Are they people from your community? Apparently, seeing them was a heartbreaking because, you know, if you see a perpetrator, someone that did evil to you, and then uh, it's really breaking. But um, we are, we, we saw, in fact, from my side, I don't know them. It's for the first time I saw them in court. I don't know them at all. And uh, I'm sure you are echoing the sentiments of other family and community members saying that they should not get bail. Yes, definitely. I think justice must prevail. And I'm very happy about the way the, way the arrest was done, because at least within 72 hours they were arrested. And it never happened, especially in that area before. So we were happy about what happened. And then I believe uh, the justice system must set also a good example for them that people who did this act, they mustn't be released. As someone who lives in that community, can you describe what's life like in that area? Oh, that area is, is really bad. It's really bad. Believe me, even the ambulance couldn't come on time because they couldn't have an escort to escort them to come to the area. Incidents like that, they happen every day. Believe me, they happen. It's just others, they are not reported. But that place is really a terrible place. I think uh, the government here too must just do something about it. And that brings me to my next question, which is what needs to be done? What kind of interventions need to be done? I think the, the government must really look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, visibility of police must be there, and the, because even the community themselves, mm -hmm. they, they, they do report, mm -hmm. but if the law doesn't take charge, then it's all in vain. Thank you so much, Rose. I want to bring in the Transformation Alliance, uh, their national chairperson, who's also here. Um, you know, you've heard from um, Mam Rose here talking to us about the loss that they faced, and there's so many other community members that we've spoken to echoing the same. What, what does your party feel needs to be done with specifically around crime in that area? Well, we are, first of all, saddened by the incident. We uh, believe that... Uh, uh, 
no one is guilty until proven guilty, but we are here to support the call to say the law must take its, its course and we must make sure that these people doesn't get bail until the truth is unearthed uh, because we cannot, we cannot honestly, we cannot live like this. We cannot live in, secure, in, in a country where this country now has to be a police state because that's exactly where it is going right now. So we condemn all of these things and we will support the family members and the community members to make sure that uh, the, the, the justice, justice is actually served to the, the family members who have lost uh, their, one of their loved ones. Thank you so much. And I'll bring in the pastor who I know is also from this community. Uh, sir, can you just tell us, you know, this community has been ravished. It was New Year's Eve, as you know, we heard from Mamrose. It was crossover and this incident took place. How has this affected the community? This has really affected our community and more especially this site of Jugulain. Uh, nothing is happening except crime. Uh, people are not able to stay or sleep in peace because of crime. You know, service delivery like ambulances, they cannot go in because of crime. So we are calling on the government to, to really do something. Uh, maybe for an example, we don't have a police station in that site. Maybe do a satellite police station, for an example. And, and also, from the satellite police station, make sure that, you know, mustn't wait for a situation like this to happen when we'll see maybe the provincial office will stand up. But let us do something and then prevent this. And we are always reactive on things and we are not proactive. So let us be proactive. A young daughter was supposed to go to school when the school reopened, 14 year old, just been shot, you know, without doing anything. And we are saying, we are calling on the Department of Justice that there mustn't be no bail. And we are also calling that people like this who have committed such crimes, they must rot in jail because of they don't deserve to be in the community, they are killing people, they don't deserve to be in a community. And let us uh, lock them inside and then let there be no parole for such people because of you cannot rehabilitate a person who has killed somebody. And we are saying to the families from the SACC, Great Aswani, uh, our condolences to them and, and to the community also, uh, let us not do a wrong thing. Let us not even attack the the families of the preparator, they, they didn't uh, send them to do this. You know, let us respect them and, 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 and as, as community, let us be united and support the family. Thank you so much. That is just some of the sentiments we're hearing here from the families, from the community members, uh, as well as political parties telling us that, you know, this is not a unique incident. This is not something that is you know, unique to this area, as we've heard, you know, there have been uh, these killings throughout various different communities, but here in Jacqueline, it's also something that they're used to, that these may not be reported on, but crime and, and, and criminality and murder of people happen quite often. Again, uh, we are here at Choshin Gove at the Magistrates Court, where the two accused, uh, Tipo um, Komo as well as Tepo Masumene, uh, have been uh, made a brief appearance. They're facing four charges of murder and one of attempted murder for that New Year's Eve shooting that took place just after midnight where four people lost their life and one of them was a teenage girl a 14 year old the other one a constable and two others were his friends uh, they have been uh, formally charged uh, today. Uh, they will now reappear in court on the 12th of January that's next Friday for formal bail application. Uh, we'll continue to speak with the communities to get their reactions as well as try and speak to some family members but for now in Zynga, back to you in studio. Thanks so much Hasina.